I had my suspicions they weren't quite done with updates from Zwift just yet this month. And today, two new updates have landed. Firstly, for the launcher slash updater for Windows, and secondly, for the companion app on iOS and Android. Starting off with a closer look at the launcher slash update, and this is only for Windows at this point in time. I haven't seen the Mac version with the update just yet. So the launcher hasn't been updated in a few years. It's a little program that starts just before you load the Zwift game. It will check for the latest versions. It will log you in and do all that interesting stuff. So this has had a refresh in the background. The download size of the launcher has gone from four meg up to around 16 meg on Windows. And nothing changes in regards to how it works. You double click, you log in. If there's an update, it will then do an update and then it will get you into the Zwift game. That's all still the same. What has changed though is something significant in the background and that's multi-threaded downloading, meaning faster full installs and a lot faster patching. To put this to the test, I thought I'd first set a benchmark by uninstalling Zwift completely from my system and installing it fresh, a complete new install with the old launcher on my 100 megabit internet connection. And you can see here with a timer down below, it's ticking on to eight minutes, nine minutes, and stopping the clock at 10 minutes and 52 seconds for a full Zwift install. I then completely removed Zwift again and did a fresh install with the new launcher on the same connection. That stops the clock at four minutes and 10 seconds. The new launcher took less than half the time to do exactly the same task of installing a full version of Zwift. To get the new launcher on Windows, you'll need to download it manually since the updater doesn't update itself. So head over to Zwift.com, log in, download the latest installer, which will then install this new launcher for you. The installer then may ask you to reboot Windows. It did on two of my machines, but once I restarted, everything was good to go and the new launcher and updater was there and flying. As I said earlier on, I'll keep you posted below for any updates on the Mac side of things. Okay, now jumping over to the updates today that have landed for the companion app on both iOS and Android to version 3.2. So Zwift here have added a dedicated view for FutureWorks boost mode events, giving you better control over your boost and charging. Let's have a look at that. A quick refresher of what boost mode is. I've entered an event here and it's given me the quick tutorial, which is you select the type of boost that you want, C to charge that boost and B to use that boost on the keyboard. With today's update, it's much easier to do both of those things with the companion app. Okay, going with the balanced type of boost today, we are ready and we'll drop into the event here with 10 seconds to go. Now you can see here over on the companion app, the boost mode screen makes it really easy for me to charge and boost when I need to in an event. Now don't follow my example here. I hit charge straight out of the blocks and it's the last point in a Zwift race you want less watts is right at the start. So I thought, well, we'll throw everything to the wind and see how it goes. And thankfully I wasn't dropped from the bunch. So I have one boost up my sleeve, so to speak. And for good measure, let's load another charge here, which removes 100 watts from my in-game wattage. And as we hit the cobbles, no better time to hit boost and unleash that plus 200 watts from the tank. Depleting those pretty fast. And you can see there, I've got a gap on the group. If we have a quick look behind, and then we'll go for the charge again, which allows the group to creep up pretty quickly back onto my rear wheel. Okay, charging through the rest of this changelog list here. They've changed the sorting of club chat to show the newest messages at the top of the preview. They've made a change to prevent underage Zwifters from viewing and participating in club chat. Fair enough. Fixed a crash in the notification area. Fix an issue with the date picker for meetups in iOS only. If you've just recently updated to iOS 14, date pickers and things, the scrolling bars were a little bit hairy, so to speak. So that's been fixed. Fixed a bug that would cause progression bar to appear when the user has completed Zwift Academy, Android only updates there, and numerous BLE bridge improvements, Android only again. So there we are, some more updates for Zwift. My MVP this month is definitely that update, bringing my download times for an entire install of Zwift to less than half of what it was. That's phenomenal. Okay, we'll leave it there for today. Remember to hit subscribe to support this channel and hit that membership button to take that support a little further. Thanks for watching.